Let's do a little mic check, everybody. How's the mic sounding? How's the mic sounding? Not that Peter's not here. <laughs> I think I was just messed up because I was in my Discord last time. Let me make sure everybody can hear me this time. We good? We good? We good? <laughs> Type harder, man. I got to get everybody set up, you know? How's everyone doing today? Got a lot of stuff to go over here today. A lot of stuff to go over. Let me uh, take a quick smoke and we'll get ready. Alrighty. So, show me everything here. I'm going to make sure I have anything pinned there. So, <coughs> we have a lot to go over here. Um, I'm going to start out with AMC. We got a lot to talk about with AMC here. Um, then we're going to get into a lot of things here. A lot of stuff is crumbling in the background, actually, and, and I think we're going to see it a lot sooner than we thought. Um, CPI, as we all saw, was a lot higher than they thought it was going to be, but we all saw that coming. Um, we're going to talk about some insider trading because the fact that this is going on, like this, it alone should be fucking criminal charges, treason, because like we'll get on all this later here. But first thing I do want to talk about is I do want to get people's opinion on this because I don't think that we're going to get Megaopolis anymore. Um, it's not the distribution, the way that it's, he wants it to be, um, forward here i don't i don't think that it's gonna happen for us because he wants pretty much 120 million dollars worth of distribution here so let's let's go ahead and break this down but i do think that this movie will still come out which obviously is still going to be great for us so let's go ahead and talk about this quick here so megaopolis here it says it's encountering troubles with finding a distributor um one of the things that happened is he put 120 million dollars into making this movie yeah, it's insane. So he wants 120 million from the distributor to, you know, for the budget to kind of equal it out. Well, if you're doing that, it better be a complete 50-50, you know what I mean? It better be a 50-50 everything on this because when you look over down here at this, it says Megaopolis, he wants you to go ahead and put down 40 million dollars domestically and 80 to 100 million globally for advertisement. So if we're putting down $120 million, you know, this movie has got to take off. That's a pretty substantial chunk of change there for AMC. Do I think that it can make it back? Do I think that it could still be a profitable investment? Yeah. I mean, I think that Megaopolis is going to do way more than $40 million domestically. And, and if you're spending $240 million, you know, worldwide, you're hoping it does five, $600 million, But that's the thing. We would need global rights, everything. Unlike the Taylor Swift where she went out and got different distributors, we'd need everything with this. And like I said, it would have to be a complete partnership in this if we're both putting down the same amount of cash. So I don't know if this is, you know, I didn't obviously think that he wanted us to pop off quick $120 million in fucking advertisement. I mean, <laughs> maybe this isn't as viable as I thought here. But, you know, I went over here and Adam Aaron came out, you know, he's over at the the awards over there and they had a or the movie i can't it's called over there comic-con or whatever where they it's not comic-con but whatever it is that they show all the awards i'm not and the new up and coming releases and stuff and talk about the industry i can't it's called off the top of my head sorry but uh he was over there talking about that he was talking about you know amc's not going to file for chapter 11 we're not going anywhere anytime soon and one of the things he was talking about on the bottom of this is distribution and getting into that and all the ways that AMC has changed as a company over the years. One of the things he talked about was, you know, distribution. Hold on. Of course, I lost it and it didn't highlight it. But he talks about it down here. Hold on. Now I'm just lagging out. Classic. All right. He talks about how no one sells more you know, tickets uh, than any studio than AMC. Um, here we go. Hold on. I think it was right here. All right, so here you go. A big budget studio tentpole probably would not be the right business for AMC to be in. Special events are another market, including live concerts and beaming into Olympics and other things like that. But by him saying this right now, I don't think that we really are going to be going after Megapolis, especially if it has this much money that needs to be put behind it and backed for it. So that that does suck. That I, I I wanted us to really smoke and, and hit this distribution for this, but I, I don't believe that it's going to happen unless 
Ford here changes his mind and doesn't need 120 million in advertisement. I just don't think that it's worth it. And I think he's going to have a lot of problems as he's currently having now finding somebody that's going to be like, yeah, let me show 120 mil for this, dude. But, you know, I think even with this now, this pushes this out because I was hoping that maybe, you know, we could maybe have a quick Q2 is still going to be amazing. We'll get in that in a second. But I was hoping maybe we could get a distribution deal signed because you saw with, you know, Taylor Swift and with these concert films, once they get the deal going and everything and, and advertisement, get it all out, they can get it out in a month, month and a half. So I was hoping maybe this would come out in Q2. But it's looking more like this will probably be a Q3, Q4, maybe 2025 movie. So I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Maybe we give up on it. Like I said, he just wants too much money for, for what we got cash on hand. But next month here, I just want to show you guys movies dramatically skyrocket. The The content is all AMC's missing. And and throughout this entire thing here, Adam Aaron talks about how they've, ch you know, throughout the, they've changed the fundamentals. They've improved this, 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 this part of the balance sheet. And this added, you know, the popcorn sweets, things like that. And they don't need content to fully be back to pre-pandemic levels to get to profitability and to get to where they need to be. But it looks like that's where it's going to start to head to. 2025, um, hold on. One second, let me pull it up quick. Give me two seconds. I know I should have pulled this up. No, not that one. Here it is right here. All right, so these guys... I follow this. If you guys want like movie updates, if you guys for a Twitter account, if you want any, you know, upcoming movies, any brand new announcements, these guys actually have insanely good updates for all movies. So definitely check these guys out here. Um, but they're at they're at this movie event right now and they're showing all the new movies that are being announced for 2025. So there is now going to be in 2025, which wasn't planned a fr uh, Friday night at Freddy's 2. There's a couple more. Sorry. <laughs> What the heck? There's people driving bobcats in my backyard. Like, what the? Uh, I don't know what's going on out there. Oh, well, they look like city workers. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Sorry, they, they were distracting me. But so for the distribution here, though, for next year, there's going to be more movies added to 2025. They already thought it was going to be a profitable year for theaters and content was coming back. We're going to get into the content coming in a second. But now you also add a Friday night. Uh, uh, Friday night at Freddy's 2, you're adding Saw. Saw actually got moved back into 2025 this year. So that sucks. We lost the movie. But now I'm also believing that you're going to see Megaopolis added to 2025 as well. But um, next month, you guys, this is how much better it gets. You got The Fall Guy. That movie should kill it. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. That movie should kill it. You got If. I know people underestimate children movies. But these children movies can be massive, massive at the box office, like Despicable Me 4 comes out later. The last two were billion dollars worldwide. Like these can be massive, massive, massive movies. So if should be massive, you got The Strangers Chapter 1, you have a Mad Max saga, and you also have the Garfield movie. So a lot more content comes out, and that is all we're missing here for AMC. So I'll believe... And in this article, Adam Aaron talked about having cash on hand, the capital raise. I don't believe AMC will need another capital raise. I don't. I just don't see it coming. In 2025, I believe AMC will be profitable throughout the year. The content's there. That's the one thing we're, we've been missing. Content's there next year. Now you're getting more even added. On top of that, streaming services are now losing money. They're losing money up the ass. Peacock lost $2.7 billion. Paramount lost 1.7 billion. Disney lost 138 million. Peacock streaming loss peak at 2.8 billion in 2023. So these streaming services are taking massive hits. Along with that, you saw the strike come. So they lost even more and even more content. So these guys are now pushing out more content that hasn't been announced. So 2025 will still get more content throughout the year. Um, on top of that, Paramount says its streaming losses have peaked as mergers. As we all know, Paramount's trying to sell, do mergers, do anything that they can possibly do as they are burning cash up the ass. So, well, again, streaming services, they're not, they're going to keep, they're going to do what they did with Dune 2. You're not going to keep having these 
special movies that are just coming to streaming services. No, you're going to go ahead and you're going to have to keep putting these out into theaters and you're going to have more and more content keep coming and coming and coming. So next year, you got the Fantastic Four. You got the Bride. This is the Bride of Frankenstein. Um, like I said, you got Friday Night at Freddy's 2, Superman. Um, they just titled this. I can't remember what the heck it is. I just saw it yesterday. They just titled this yesterday, but it's a Leonardo DiCaprio movie, Sean Penn movie. It, it'll do good. It'll do very good. Um, you got the Michael Jackson movie, Thunderbolts, Minecraft, Mission Impossible, Captain America, Jurassic World, Final Destination, Snow White, Frankenstein. So you have The Bride and then Frankenstein. You have Monst or I'm sorry, you have a Blade movie coming out, Tron Ares, a Fast and Furious movie. This ballerina movie here, this ballerina movie is, is the next it's the next chapter of John Wick type thing. It's a spin-off. John Wick will be in this movie. It should do very well. Mickey 17, How to Train Your Dragon should do super well with children. Um, you got Avatar 3. Avatar 3, I don't need to say any more than that. Uh, there's a Star Trek movie. The Zootopia should kill it. Um, I don't care about this Poovers. You got uh, The Bad Guys 2. This movie should kill it. It's another children's movie. You got Megan 2.0. Um, you have a SpongeBob movie. A SpongeBob movie should destroy it with kids. You have a Roblox movie. Um, I want everybody to remember Roblox. We have distribution for Roblox in 2025, so we do have a uh, distribution next year. You also have a Black Phone 2. A Black Phone, a Black Phone 1 did $100 million at the box office. I mean, plenty and plenty. A Dracula movie. This Dracula movie actually looks good. Airbenders. Like I said, there's going to be more and more announcements. There's another... The reason I showed you this account... Today, they're going to announce even more movies coming out. So there's going to be another additional content coming out here. Um, the other day, they announced... I can call it and pull it up. They, here you go, right here. All of this was announced yesterday at the panel. Oh, it is Comic-Con. Or CinemaCon. Sorry, CinemaCon, not Comic-Con. CinemaCon. So CinemaCon, uh, I can't remember who's going today. But again, a lot more stuff is going to come out that wasn't announced. Oh, here it is, Guy Ritchie. It's called In the Grays now. It's called In the Gray. So this, this untitled movie has been titled. It will now be called In the Gray. But again, guys, they're losing money with these streaming services. Streaming is not the way. It's just not. Um, let's keep moving on here. But I do want to... I do want to stress that. Like I said, AMC, they have plenty of cash. We're, we should be, the, there's no more quarters coming where it's like, oh my God, we're going to have a huge cash burn. That's not coming anymore. So we have plenty of cash to get to, to 2025. Like I said, there's, there's no reason for the stock to be where it is. Everything about the company has completely turned around compared to where we were when the doors were closed pre-pandemic. And you're telling me the stock's worth worse, less than pre-pandemic. It's just stupidity at this point. Short percentage raised four and a half, what four point two percent self reported in the last two weeks here. It's gonna keep skyrocketing. Like I said, guys, just hold on, relax. Let let the let the bombs and the rest of the economy take care of this. AMC is just fine. I know the stock price doesn't reflect it right now, but it will have a recovery. It will have a recovery in May. It will have a recovery when the box office is suddenly slaying it. When you have all of these movies right here, this. May could easily be a billion dollar month at the box office. May could easily be a billion dollar a month at the box office. Easily. So, like I said, you will, you will, the price will turn around. It will rebound. What's happening right now? CPI data came in hotter than expected. I, I expect a couple of these institutions might have made some small, small moves, might have made some small sales as well. You got, like I said, they're shorting it like crazy. And on top of that, you have the dilution going on. Obviously, we're still raising capital. I don't believe that they sold all of the all of the necessary shares yet to raise the full 250 million. That should be done by the end of this week or next week. And then you should see a rebound because now you should have a raised capital. You will no longer see dilution and you will have content coming back and you will have the months and you will have the good quarters to where profitability will be coming back. Now, 
And Terra Capital, they went around and they fucked around with AMC. And now they're finding out. And Terra, and Terra Capital, a $1.3 billion fund backed by Blackstone, has frozen its assets. Or it's hard to sell assets. If I have to pile in on huge losses, fuck Terra. Fuck all these guys. You got to love seeing these people that, you know, went ahead and fucked around. And now they get to find out later on here. These hedge funds are going to keep taking losses. Rates are not going anywhere. Rates are not going anywhere. And matter of fact, what's going to happen here is they're going to hike rates. And like I told you guys, they're going to. Everybody thought there was going to be a cut this year. And in matter of fact, inflation's getting back out of control, which I was showing everybody. And it's going to. They will have to hike rates. They will hike rates again. Watch. But let's get into the real thing here. This is what I want everybody to see. Fucking. Hell. There you go. All right. Okay. I even signed up for this stupid ass thing just so I could show this. Whatever. I'm not going to worry about it. I know what it said. If you want to want to go ahead and read this here, I'm going to go ahead and post this for everybody. All right. Now, last time, like a, two weeks ago here, I was talking about how all of the lending in, in, in bankings, it's going down. It's drying up. Credit's drying up. And that's one of the things that we're going to end up needing to see to get our squeeze back. We're going to need to see credit drying up for these hedge funds. We're going to need to see credit drying up from all these banks for each one of these banks as well. You're going to need to start seeing some collapse and some pressure on these guys in the back end. And you're going to see that by the commercial real estate. You're going to see that completely by the $929 billion bomb going off. And now you have more more and more bombs going off. So the problem is, is when you have no, when credit's all dried up over here, they have to go to private lending. Well, private lending is at a way higher rate. It's way riskier. And guess what? It's ballooned. It's exploded. And now the... <laughs> The IMF is they're issuing a warning to everybody. You guys, the private credit credit sector is insane. It's over 2.7 billion or trillion dollars now. It's ballooned 1.7 trillion pretty much in the last couple of years. So everybody now is rushing to private lending and they're all running over here because they can't get enough to support their bad bets. Well, now everybody's going, "Hey, there's no regulation over here. And I've been talking about this bullshit with these ISDA contracts forever. Phase six was supposed to regulate this shit, and it doesn't, and it's not, and no one seems to give a fuck. Everybody's letting everything go. I thought there would be some kind of fucking force out there that would govern it and be like, hey, you guys, this is, you gotta stop doing this. This has to be paid. Well, what this entire article talks about is how nobody knows the true amount. Nobody knows the true amount over here. But we do know it's around $2.7 that that they estimate. And they go, that's just kind of what we have to estimate on what we know. We know there's plenty more that we don't know about. So you have trillion-dollar lending over here, lending in the trillions, and no one's watching it. And he's looking over here, and they go... If you look at the world right now, which we're going to get into in a second, if there's any kind of a downturn, they go, this $2.7 trillion bomb will explode. And it's not just going to explode in one area. It's going to explode worldwide. Because one thing I've said about the derivative since my first video I've ever made, the very first video I ever made was about derivatives contracts. It was with Randall Cornett, and we were talking about derivatives contracts, this is where they're hiding all the shit. How did you hide the short interest? We literally showed you guys through lawsuits. I showed you guys through legal court cases. Proven facts. Proven facts. This is why when people don't, you guys, it's proven facts. It's right fucking here. It's all done through these derivatives. All your short interest, all the ways to hide it, all the ways to reset it, all the ways to get off reg show. It's all right here. It's all right here. The reason we are only reason we know about this, 
The only reason we know about this, look at it talks about making synthetic long positions that he had short positions for. This, and he was able to close them out, eliminating the synthetic lungs. You guys, I've already went over this. It's called a sham reset. You package up buy rights, flex options, and, and married puts. And you flex, you put them in a contract, and you go write them with, with the bank. And now you're able to use these as locates and reset things. We've already went over this. This was all supposed to be stopped by phase six. And that's why I made such a big deal out of phase six. I'm like, holy fuck, the World Bank is going to govern this. But then the more you dig into the World Bank, the people who own the World Bank is us. It's our fucking banks. It's, it's the same criminals. And this is my point. When the same criminals are issuing warnings to everybody else about their their nefarious activities are getting so out of hand that it's over 2.7 trillion and they're warning the world that's insane when they're they're pretty much telling on themselves you guys we got to slow down because this is unstoppable you have a two we just now and this is my point you guys everybody thinks they can go on forever this can go on forever i know this has gone on for three this has gone on for three years yeah and the problems ballooned and ballooned and ballooned and ballooned and ballooned it's gone on for three years but it's gotten worse it hasn't gotten better you guys act like oh man for all this is no the entire everything's getting worse it's getting worse for everyone and the people are going what do you mean their businesses are losing money too. They have tons of companies that are going down. They have tons of loans and stuff that are defaulting. They have tons of regional banks that are going to crash. They can't even afford to pay back the bank lending program. You guys, it hasn't even been a month. It's been about two months and there's been $21 billion in defaults. What are the feds going to do? They just had $21 billion in, in loans default on them by regional banks that can't afford to pay them back. What are you going to do? People go, well, you'll just make up a new... No, you won't. They got to get that back before they give them another one. You're not going to make up a new program and then say, here, now we'll just transfer them over to this one and then just... No. You're going to need to close out your old one. People are going to say, well, they'll move them to the discount window. No, you can't. There's rules in place. They don't qualify for the discount window. If you look at the regional bank ETF, what's going on? It's plummeting because people are finally realizing no one's going to come to save these regional banks. No one's coming. This is starting in March, June. And guess what? That's when AMC is starting to get profitable. Crazy. Their bombs are going to... When it comes to AMC in this play, their bombs are going to go off when it's going to start to turn around completely for us. Yeah, it sucks right now. But the thing is, is when you looked at, the problem was with AMC. They gave a $250 million cap, okay? And then what did they do? They said, we, we will only sell up to 800, or 83.3, whatever, 333 million shares. So what they did is they gave an average amount per, per share that they'll sell at. So what did the shorts do? They dropped it to that fucking number. And now they dropped it a little bit below it. And they're going, you, we're not going to allow you to raise any more of that capital. You raised what you raised or you're going to have to sell it up below what you even wanted to. So, again, I think AMC will be just fine. What, what I believe is also going to happen with AMC in the next week, two, three weeks, AMC will restructure their debt. AMC will announce that the capital raise is done. And then they're going to restructure their debt. And from there, the price will recover. You're going to push the debt out. You're going to take $75 million, $77.5 million. You're going to go over and take $77.5 and, and you're going to get your 28.5%. And you're going to pay $100 million on the 2026 debt. You're now going to get another one to refinance it. And you're going to probably offer them some covenants, something. You're going to now put, line up the lien, the lien holders with you. Now you all are in the same interest of getting AMC's stock price back up. AMC's price will recover because now they will push that debt out and pay some down. And they will get a better rate than they have currently. 
and it will save them money. And then they will have enough money to offset their cash burn. And then again, in Q2, I believe we will be profitable. I'm not saying we're going to be popping off 90, 80, 100 million profit, but we'll be profitable enough to where, all right, cash burn's not going to worry. We're not going to have, like I said, he's not going to need a capital raise. We, after this capital raise, will still have, if you pay the 75 million and get your 77 million, you're still going to have around 830, 840 million in capital which will, will suffice all your debt covenants and all your li liquidity things and all everything. You're good to go. You're just fine. So again, th there's no more. That's why I said he did a big raise. You do a big raise to refinance that debt and make sure that, hey, we're good for the year. You don't need to do anymore. Let our price recover. Let content come back because that's all we're missing. And even Adam Aaron starts out in this thing right here talking about that. He believes everything. He believes he's turning things around. He believes he's fixing AMC's problems. He's fixing their balance sheet and once pretty much talks about it right here. There's no basically there's no he talks about in 2025 and 2026 there's gangbusters content comes back. That's all we're missing. Everything else we're fixing. There he goes we're taught he's fixing their uh EBITDA, he's fixing their balance sheet. He's taking care of deferred rent. He's getting rid of the credit facility. You guys, in 2025 AMC will no longer be paying $20 million a quarter on deferred rent. $25 million a quarter, $30 million a quarter on deferred rent. That's a big deal. You're no longer going to be paying $15, $20 million a fucking quarter on getting paying off that, that credit facility. That's $40, $45 million a quarter. You're no longer burning on other sh on on bullshit. On top of that, we're going to go ahead and renegotiate contract, close down more things. So your cash burn in 2025 compared to what you have now in 2024 is going to be drastically different on top of having the content back. I believe you will also have sweets in, in grocery stores. I believe you will have your alcohol this year. I'm surprised it hasn't came out yet. Maybe what he needed to do with some of this capital raise is you know pay a little bit more to get it going a little quicker. I believe we're still going to sign I mean, he talks about getting into sports, and he talks about how he's been working on these contracts, but I still believe we're going to sign a, a sports thing sometime this year. Again, it's all about just adding content. At this point, for AMC, they're cutting out the middleman. Their margins on everything are going up drastically. And again, if we keep creating more suites, you can now renegotiate with Nestle and say, hey, we need more, more per unit sold for shelf space, or we need to charge more for shelf space. Perfect. Now, one of the things I want people to start looking at, because a lot of people, when we talk about this and I talk about the economy and things like that, I've given you tools and I've shown you guys six, seven, eight, nine stock plays throughout the year that a lot of people made a lot of money on. They were very, very profitable plays. Just a matter of fact, starting off with Coinbase. Remember when everybody went crazy on the Bitcoin ETFs? And I was like, hey, Bitcoin's fucking insanely expensive and, and you can get in, but you're not, you know, what you can do with Coinbase options and things like that compared to what you'd be able to afford in Bitcoin, you could be, you can generate a lot more revenue doing it that way or a lot more profit that way. Well, what happened? Within two weeks, Bitcoin went up a hundred and, or, I'm sorry, not Bitcoin, uh, Coinbase went up $105 a share. So if you played options, you made quite a bit of money. Now, we also went over ETF plays where I've said, hey, the SPY, there's been plenty of times where Powell's came on and I've went on Twitter and I said, hey, I guarantee you the plunge protection team's gonna kick in and, and guess what? The SPY's gonna jump up. And guess what? It jumped up eight, nine bucks, five, six, seven, eight bucks every time. Told you guys to buy gold for the last two years. What have I been saying? Buy gold. Don't buy fucking gold stocks, ETFs. Buy physical gold. Well, look where gold's at today. Gold is at an all-time high. It's skyrocketing. Why? I'm showing you guys this because there is ways to make money when you know what's going to happen. You can play off of vents. Well, what's happening now? You have... Credit drying up. You now have private credit getting fucked up. There's nowhere else to turn. 
When you can't, when there's no private credit, when private credit's having problems, banks won't lend it. Where do you go? Well, that's what we're about to find out. So, hedge funds are selling stocks at the fastest pace in three months, and they're stepping up short bets across the board. They're shorting everything. They're betting on rates coming, kicking in, staying up. Well, guess what? That's exactly what's going to happen. The economy is going to get worse and worse and worse. And they're shortening their buying puts. They see a crash coming. What is happening? You're now seeing buildings go for less than houses. The AT&T Tower. I want you guys to listen to this, to think about this. The AT&T Tower. Sold in St. Louis for $3.5 million. It was sold for $205 million in 2006. This thing sold for $3.5 million. I can go right now on any realtor site, and I, and I know it's California, but you can go to California and you can find a house that's the size of my house. And it's about $4 million. It is so fucked up right now. You can buy a skyscraper for the price of a house, an average single family house in California. That's insanity. So this thing is sold for a $202 million loss. And they sold it. Well, if I bought something for 205, I mean, think about this, you guys. If I bought something for $205 million, why would I sell it for $3 million unless I really fucking needed the cash? I mean, whether it's fucking 10 years, 20 years, you're taking a hit, a huge hit, unless you absolutely need it. Why are you doing that? So... I want people to look at this, though. You now have hedge funds stepping up their bets. You now have credit drying up. The feds are fucked. The feds are so fucked right now, it's not even funny. The bank lending program, now let's look at it. What are we at now? So another billion and a half. So I could go ahead. I could probably pull it up on this side. In the in this... so. If they're at $20 billion defaulting on these loans, I want to ask you guys this question. You're at $21 billion almost in default in a month. You still have $130 billion worth in loans coming that you don't know if they'll be repaid. Let's just say, no, 25 30% can't pay their loans back. You're going to have like $60 billion in, in just a hit. I already showed you guys with their, their balance sheet last two times ago. Before I went live with Peter, I showed you their balance sheet. The Fed's already cooking their books. They're already insolvent. So what are you going to do? Take a $60 billion loss and just say, well, how are you going to hide that? On top of that, look at what they're doing. They're operating at a $161 billion loss. So you're suddenly going to be negative 200 billion. And what are you going to do? Print it and just, what are you going to do? You're going to print it and pay it back with new printed money? I guess you could, but now you're again adding to fucking inflation. And and how do you justify that to the people? Hey, you guys, we owe $2 billion because 200 billion because we let regional banks pretty much fuck us up the ass and, 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 and abuse a program that we created and we let them steal for for you know 70 billion 50 60 billion dollars and we can't pay it back so and that's what and that's the thing that's what's going to end up happening but it's like the feds right now they they don't have any money to keep bailing these banks out they don't have any more tools to create new fucking programs because this la- this program right here everybody goes why did, they're just going to make a new program they can't they can't even finish off the last one they're going to have $60 billion in damages from the last one. What do you think? They're going to make another program and keep stacking on billions in damages and just let these... These banks are going to default, you guys. 
it, it's not like these guys are going to say, hey, well, you know, they're, they're all defaulted. They're all insolvent as fuck. They can't pay their loans back. I don't know why. The, if you truly think about this, this program was stupid as fuck. It made no sense. Let's make a uh, we're going to go ahead and take all these regional banks that can't, af you know, can't afford to stay afloat and we're going to give them loans. We know they're not going to be able to pay these fucking loans back. How would they pay them back? Everybody knows that these guys are in trouble. People are leaving these banks. They're not staying there. And look at this. I want you guys to, to prove my point here. New York Community Bank. You remember this bank? You remember this bank? It just collapsed. And then they got a billion dollar injection. They're already collapsing again. New York Community Bank, because everyone's leaving them and no one's going to stay in this fucking collapsing fire pit here. They're now trying to pay out the nation's largest interest rates. You guys were so desperate, we'll pay you more than anybody in the whole nation. Please just come give us money. No one's coming, bitch. I want you guys to understand what this was. This was a scam. This was that group of hedge funds investing a billion dollars to get a stake in this company, in this bank. They were then going to use depositors' money to do what? Buy TikTok. And I want you guys to realize why. Everyone, more and more people are asking what the fuck is going on every day. More and more people are learning every day about the Wall Street, the banks, politicians, the Federal Reserve, the scam, the way that they enslave you, the way that they make sure you stay right where you are, the way that if you get too high up, they take it all away anyways. We will always bail out criminals. I want you guys to, I mean, before I even go on, look at how insane this is. The fact that this is even real, the fact that this is real, I don't even care that JP Morgan, the fact that JP Morgan has paid 40 billion in penalties, JP Morgan has paid 40 billion in penalties. They've done 276 felonies, but right here is what i want to get to you go to the you go to the year here and you click since jamie diamond's been been involved okay let's go to the year number just look at five down five down jp morgan chase sexual exploitation of minors penalty amount 290 million number five sexual exploitation of minors aka for funding jeffrey epstein's island for having 14 of your executives 14 executives in the virgin islands they have proof of 14 executives visiting the island funding them knowing that watching taking every j J JP Morgan is just as guilty as Jeffrey Epstein 100%. And for all we know and there probably is another island and just a different Jeffrey Epstein. It's fucking disgusting. But since you look at since Jamie Diamond's taken over billions and billions and billions and billions and it's everything. It is every fucking kind of banking violation and this doesn't even count the ones that he just got charged with yet. This doesn't even add to 2024 yet. He's still missing like they're still missing like six or seven more fucking things on here. Think about this. You have somebody who's going to now pay because the what was it? It was 350 million for the the federal bank one. So at so what, what, another five hundred and six. So he's going to be at about forty billion six hundred and sixty-eight million in fines when this updates with the next five charges that aren't on here. How fucking insane is that? Forty, almost forty-one billion in fines because they broke the law that many times, and they got away with this because all two seventy-five was an acceptance waiver and consent. Fucking unreal but anyways back to this so 
What they want to do now is because everything is crashing, you guys. People are waking up. Everybody's starting to understand the criminality. What can you do? You already own media, but what you don't own is TikTok. You can't silence everything if you don't own everything. Do you understand? So what you do is you take the criminals, you take this munchkin guy, he gets his hedge fund buddies, he calls up Citadel, and guess what? Citadel was about to have a stake in TikTok. They tried to ban it, they tried to strong arm TikTok, and Citadel was going to have a stake in TikTok, just like they have a stake in Twitter. Just like, what? tell me why Elon Musk had to go get that little small amount of money from Ken Griffin. Why? You didn't need him involved. Like I said, they got to control it since he has it. Anybody, say, go put up a post real quick. I can, I can do it right now. I can show you guys if I put up two posts. One post will be about something so stupid. It doesn't matter. Irrelevant to the world. I'll just put up OJ died. How sad. Something, something. It'll have like fucking 75,000 views in like a second. But if I say anything about any kind of criminality going on, It'll have like 2,000 views. It's all filtered. And, and they can't sit there and go, well, we can't have one way for people to expose the truth. Because the truth is coming out. 2024, just like Cat Williams said, with all those people in the industry, 2024 will be a year of reckoning for these fuckers. 2024, truths will come out. People aren't going to be hiding shit. There will be fuckers going down. There will be no hiding this. The Fed, who are sitting there bailing you out forever, are burning themselves. They're burning themselves. They're cooking their own books, and they're taking. They're about to take on billions and billions of losses. They didn't. They had no plan for it. You guys, I showed you for the last two months. Every single time that question was asked, because I had an alert set on my phone for those exact words. If those words were ever asked. What is your plan for the bailout program if no fucking law, if for the loans, if they can't be paid back? Every single time they said, we have absolutely no plan because it shouldn't happen. It's already happened to the sum of $21 billion, and it's been like a month and a half. It's going to happen to, uh, at this rate, it's, it's going at like 40%, like 45%. If that keeps up, and you had like another 70, another 80 60, 70 billion, and they have 100 billion in losses to regional banks that are now collapsed. What are we doing here? Like, we have to take this country back. And the way we do that is we just inform everybody. You wake people up to the system. Our forefathers said it. If anybody knows what the hell the real banking system is, you guys will be marching in the street and fucking throwing people in these in the Boston Harbor all over again. Breaking news. U.S. inflation rises to 3.5. I've shown you guys for the last two weeks. Inflation's going up. They're not going to cut. There's no fucking way. They're printing still. You guys, they're still printing like crazy. Demand's not there. Everybody's just working two jobs trying to be resilient. The problem is now the reason why. Look at Here it is right here. The reason why everything hasn't crashed harder than fuck, it's right here. It's simple. No, 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 one of these ones here. Here you go, right here. I showed you guys a couple months ago. Everybody's living off buy now, pay later. And they're not going to pay later because it doesn't affect their credit score. And what did I tell you about what the hell is that company? What's it like, a firm or whatever the hell it was? I think it's a firm. I don't, I don't know. I don't use those pay things. I can't remember what the hell. I think it's a firm. A firm's a Ponzi scheme waiting to die. There's another play. A firm's going to have massive defaults like fucking they've never, ever seen before. And they created the company with no background checks, no credit checks, and no, no repercussions. The only repercussion is, is if you don't use our service... You can't use it again. Or if you default on our service, you can't use it again. Ooh. So you basically tell me I get a one-time credit risk default on a purchase of whatever amount you'll give me? Well, that's the first place people went to. 
the second place people went to. I showed you guys. Credit cards. Everybody is spending up their, using their credit cards, using their credit cards, because they're all still trying to use their, that's still live the same exact lifestyle. But it, you can't anymore. It, it's too expensive. You can't go out to eat 10 times a you know, a week like a lot of these people were doing. And that's the thing. People need to learn to cook and everything. I know people are going to say that, but it's like, that's not the point. You go to McDonald's now and you get, you look at what McDonald's did. They, they, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Okay. So you do what is called shrinkflation. Okay. You keep making things smaller. Okay. You make them smaller. You make them smaller and smaller and you keep charging more. But you don't let them know it's smaller. You just make it a little smaller, a little smaller. Look at this. McDonald's adds two new burgers to its lineup. A double Big Mac that with his four patties. And then you can get a, a super big. It's like these other. And then not just these ones. But the other one's called like a mega Big Mac, right? It's like a. These are the ones with the more patties. And then the other one's a double Big Mac or a Big Mac or whatever the fuck. It. They're not showing the other stupid sandwich. The other stupid one. Is it's a bigger Big Mac, so it's a Big Mac, but just a, a little size bigger. Like it's just a little bigger burger. It's a little bigger bun. It's got more lettuce. It's not another patty. It's not a, like these are more patties. It's this one. It's right here. It's just a bigger size Big Mac. Okay. Well, all they did is added what they took away in shrinkflation. So they what they took away in shrinkflation, they made a new item saying, well, you can get the bigger Big Mac which was what the Big Mac was a year ago, but you just don't notice. And now we're going to upcharge you for what we had as the same fucking Big Mac, but we're going to double upcharge you and just call it a bigger Big Mac. <laughs> so shrinkflation is a joke because they'll sit there and, like I said, grab go, go look in a box of cereal. Go look at your box of Cheez-Its. Go look at your box of Goldfish. You're going to notice that the 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 weight has dropped pretty pretty noticeably. It always drops. There's suddenly more air in the bag. And then what they'll do is they'll charge you they'll make these new bags, they'll make these new burgers that were the same fucking amount that they used to charge. But then they'll just make the bag the, the box bigger. Joke. It's a fucking piece of joke, dude. But anyways, so back to this. We can't stop printing. Everybody's living off credit cards. Well, right now, what just happened? Credit card defaults. U.S. credit card delinquency rates were the highest on record in the fourth quarter. Highest ever. So now you're having people default in the fourth quarter like crazy. It's now starting. People are no longer able to spend. Okay? So, why are shorts? I'm, now, I'm, this is all leading you guys into this. Why are the shorts fucking piling into everything? Why are they selling stock? Why are they fucking betting shorts up across the board? Well, if everybody's no longer got that money to spend on credit, on their credit cards, if people are now starting to default, I want you guys to listen to this because this is very important right here. You now have record defaults. Not only do you have record defaults, look at you're, they're doing it at record percentages. The bank interest rate's at 22.6%. It's the highest ever. People are defaulting on credit cards at 22.6%. Think of how much interest and how fast it's occurring. So, now because of that, look what just came up. Nearly 50 million Americans are now subprime borrowers. 50 million Americans are now subprime borrowers because of their credit cards, which now that means they need to go and register for even higher credit cards, even higher loans. And basically, they're pretty much not borrowable people. So now you have basically everybody defaulting. Everybody's now these people are looking at this like, I don't even care when I default and I no longer even care to get loans anymore. People are so fucking losing it they're like not even worrying about owning anymore and it's like no this should be pissing them off not defeating them we should all be united see this is my problem so i go on fucking twitter today and i'm gonna rant for a second i'm gonna rant for a second because this pisses me off and it, it is so dumb and childish 
we, I go on Twitter today, and I'm sitting there like, okay, what's going on in the community? And it's literally one guy thinks this other guy's a shill, and now everyone pick a side. Who fucking gives a shit? Who gives a fuck? If somebody gives out information you don't like, it doesn't make them a shill. It just means they don't agree with you. Everybody thinks differently. We can all, we can all disagree on how the company should go. We're not the CEO. I don't, I don't think Adam Aaron's handled the company perfectly. I don't think he has at all. There's been plenty of times I've disagreed, and I've made videos, and that's the thing. No matter what kind of a video I make, somebody's going to get mad. Either I'm a, oh, you, you're now nah, you're hating AA, you're, you're against us. You're a shill. Oh, my God, you're supporting AA. You're a shill. No, who fucking cares, guys? In the end of the day, none of this shit matters. What matters is these fucking pieces of shit have stolen everything. They have stolen from your kids. Jerome Powell himself said, hey, the deficit is unsustainable. What we're doing is unsustainable. We're borrowing from future generations to pay for the mistakes we're doing today and for tomorrow just to get by for tomorrow. Well, guess what? How many generations are you going to have to steal from to pay for fucking next week? These guys are committing crimes like I just showed you. 270 fucking felonies. They shut the buy button off on you. They turned the buy button off on you. People in GME, oh, look at the report. Look at the report. AMC had more exposure than GME. It's time to fucking get over each other. It's time to come together and say, hey, the report said we both got fucked. Everyone that, uh, I don't give a fuck if you like Adam Aaron. He doesn't control the stock price. Kenny G himself said it. Me and seven other firms, we put it where we want to. And then we pay analysts to fucking say what we want them to say. We can control it through derivatives. And I have rule 203, B, paragraph 2. As long as there are orders... I, as a market maker, I can fucking exempt it and fill it and mark it as an exempt order. What else do they have? I'm going to show this every time because this never gets traction and it blows my fucking mind. The CNS system, it literally says right here, as long as there are orders, look at this. It says it right in front of you. Members can be exempt from short and certain short positions to avoid segregation violations as long as they have other delivery needs. In other words, if a market maker has a fucking order, he can fill it and he can borrow it from the CNS program. And he can be exempt as long as he has it until, like I showed you down here, it literally says until there's sufficient, sufficient trading. What the fuck does that mean? Read this. Here's their benefits. They're already re Securities are automatically allocated to their long positions. Hold on. This isn't it. Where is it? Hold on. This is the how where's benefits. Here it is. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Regardless of volume. Here you go. Here was my other thing. Regardless of volume, so they don't care how many shares you want. I want you to understand this. They don't give a fuck about how many shares you want. You can ask for a million, a hundred million. They don't give a fuck. They don't care. What they care about is the cost associated with them. They care about the net position, the net value of those positions, and as long as you can somehow re-put that back in, you're good. I guess it, the CNS program is a fucking crime scene. It's a absolute crime scene, and I showed you guys the law that made it so they no longer can make these fuckers buy back shares. These guys can default in here, and there's no law saying anyone can enforce them to make them buy them back. They just default on them. And I showed you nine years ago, ten years ago, it was 80% of people were defaulting. What is it now? A hundred? Because why would they give a fuck? That's what I'm saying. 
The DTCC needs to be fucking disbanded. The whole market needs to go. The stock market is a corrupt tool from top to bottom. Unless you know, like I showed you guys, there's, there's things you know. You can learn TA. You can play the system. I'm not saying you can't fucking, oh, you can make money. Of course you can make money out there. Of course you can. But the fact is, you're playing a game that is so fucking rigged. It's like, oh my god, if people knew the truth, no one would fucking be in it. It is unbelievable the amount of shit these guys can get away with. The fact that they can take derivatives and close shit out. Look here, guys. Right here. He would pair or hedge his new purchase with option trades, married puts, and buy rights. Now, anybody that's asking me, why would he do buy rights, Bigums? Because you can, that cancels out his taxes. By doing buy rights, he cancels out the taxes on the positions that he stole. Literally, he can cancel out the taxes on positions he's stealing by claiming them as losses with buy rights. What? And this, and it's like, uh, all right, here, let me show you something because this is treason. This is. This is treason. I don't give a fuck. This is treason. This is fucking treason. Justin, thank you so much. I always appreciate it. Little Biggums appreciates it. This is fucking treason, though. Sorry, Justin, but I'm real in this. I, this is fucking treason. Look at this. Okay, before I even get to that. Scandal rocks Biden laptop. So they end up finding out that the BLS has a secret fucking group of super users. And it sends the super users CPI data and all this information. All this information on the economy. Tons of it. Only they get it. They get it ahead of everyone. Why? So then they can go ahead and place bets and destroy everything. They can go ahead and bet. They tell everybody, rate cuts. Rate cuts are coming. Everything's good to go. Um... This is okay, this is okay, blah, blah, blah. Everybody go ahead and place your wagers. Then they go ahead and tell everybody else in this back room. Oh, by the way, real inflation's higher than expected. Um, this is fucked. This is fucked over here. We're going to end up probably hiking rates. And I told you guys, there will be a rate hike before there's a rate cut. No one wanted to hear it. No one wanted to blame me. Everybody's like, oh, they'll cut four times. They'll cut three times. Now they're talking one time. Now they're talking there's a 13% chance they even have a rate cut. Now I'm seeing rate hike articles left and right. Now I'm seeing it's going to go back to 8%. And that's what I told everybody. We're going to start seeing 8%. We're going to start seeing 7%. It's going to get ridiculous. Well, look at this. So now they send these people, a, a group of Wall Street users, super, super data. Well, when you go ahead and you read who's all involved, it's the typical fucking pieces of shit. So, in other words, Jerome Powell, who said, I don't have parties and I don't have contact with these people and all this shit. He actually has a, 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 an, a, a private email exchange group with these guys. Huh. So, if you read this, who else is in here? Fucking Citadel. Citadel. So Citadel's out there getting, oh, we're the greatest fucking company out there. Super, we're, you're fucking criminals. They gave it, this is treason. This is fucking insider information. This should be fucking prison. SEC, if you're fucking listening, do your fucking job. Here's insider trading. Hey, government. Hey, Doge. Hey, FBI. Uh... Insider trading, insider trading alert. They're not politicians. They don't get to just take this, get this information and then place wagers. Fucking piece of shit. Crime, literal crime. My super users. And then in mid-February, one user asked, can I be added to the super user email list? BLS replied, yeah, I can add you to the list. Go fuck yourselves. All you tools. It said, this is insane, dude. Insider information. Now watch this. So after I went over this before, more Jamie Dimon crap. So Jamie Dimon here, 
is the top guy. So Jamie Dimon, they go ahead and they give it to Jamie Dimon at J.P. Morgan. They give it to BlackRock right after. What's Jamie Dimon do? He comes out the other day and goes, there's going to be 8% inflation. How do you know that, Jamie? Oh, because you're on a super fucking user list with all these other douchebags. Well, what else is Jamie doing? So Jamie's on some super fucking list getting insider information. He's throwing right around his weight to the president to look at this he's getting charged with with 15 crimes again these are more of those five crimes i was talking about here's that 350 billion dollars i was talking about what the guy did is look at this investigation for billions you guys billions of improperly conducted trades by his federally insured bank billions of trades trades not shares trades if i did a billion trades think about this let me ask you this if i did a billion trades unregistered illegal trades how many shares can i attach to those billion trades now how many shares can i attach to five billion trades how many shares are in each one of those trades whole and this is what i talk about supply demand them them setting the fucking prices billions of trades that were improperly conducted billions how many of these were amc how many of these were gamestop how many of these are whatever stock company that you're involved in billions Five criminal felony charges. These are all felony criminal charges. That will get dropped. There's another one. It's another regulator. It's the, They're currently being charged by the current uh, Office of the Comptroller and the currency of the Federal Reserve are charging them. There's also a third regulator that is not named currently that is also doing another investigation and filing another suit against them. Jamie Dimon belongs in prison. Jamie Dimon needs to be behind bars. Jamie Dimon needs this sentence right here. Trao Mei Lin, Vietnamese billionaire, sentenced to death for 44 billion fraud. Now there are people out there going, death for fraud in all this? Yes, death for fraud in all of this. That is what they should be sentenced when it's to this number. Why? How many people killed themselves when they lost everything? How many people lost their entire retirements that, that worked for 30, 40, 50 years that they can never get back, that they can never retire? That not only that, they were going to leave something to their children. And now they're working not just for themselves, just to leave their child something. And that will put them in the grave that much faster. You're taking years and years and years of millions and millions of lives. You're devastating people's lives. You're taking their homes, their cars, their way of work, everything from them. And you don't even give a fuck. You look like this, straight faced. What's this bitch's problem? She didn't do it in the United States. That's it. That was her problem. She didn't do it in the United States. Because here in the United States, you get 20 years, 25 years. And with good behavior, 15. So that's a fucking joke, dude. What What is happening and what is allowed is in fucking sanity. It's insanity. But... Back to this shit. So, what's going to start happening? And and and, and everybody, and, and I want you to listen to this, because if there's people out there thinking of plays, here's some plays. Here's some information to make plays, because this is what's going to happen. What starts happening when people start defaulting? Companies start defaulting. Taxes start going down. Deficits start going up. Well... When you start seeing this, what's the next thing that happens right here? No. No. <laughs> Hold on. Right here. Once we default, they default. More companies are defaulting over and over again. Now listen to this. 
percentage of repeating defaults is now the second highest since 2008. About the third of defaults in 2023 were by repeat defaulters that are continuously just given a chance, given a chance, given a chance. A little more, a little, little longer, a little longer. Just give me this. No, no, no. When we, when you kill your middle class, you kill your poor class, you kill your companies. You kill your tax revenue streams. You, you, you're going to completely add to that deficit. You're going to make everything worse in your economy. And what happens then? What happened yesterday? This was a huge sign that time is running out. The government's very nervous. The government's getting very, very nervous. Because I want you guys to really listen to this next part. This is how fucked our economy is right here. Look at this. So... Gold is rising, gold is rising. And look at since I've since I've talked, since I've refreshed this over and over. Gold is now up to $2,382. It's went up $34 today. So again, I've been telling you guys for two years now, if you've been buying physical gold, you're feeling good. You guys. Everybody sees how fucked the United States is. Central banks are scooping this up faster than they can, you can even imagine. Look what happened in the treasury auction last night. And this is a giant tail on what's going on. This is a giant sign on everything. This is what I want you to listen to. Treasury auction last night in the 10-year. People are going to blame CPI, but there's no sugarcoating what's happening. What are the key things that stands out? Foreign bidders on treasury bonds, it was 71% before. It dropped to 62%. What did I tell you guys was going to start happening? And this is when the Fed are in trouble. This is when the bomb's in trouble. And this is when you're going to have your country, your reset's coming. It's coming fast and it's coming hard. Foreign bidders dropped to 62%, a 9% drop in one month. That's a big fucking deal. That's a huge drop. That's a massive drop. 24% of the auction, it dropped 24%. This is not good. You're getting less and less and less demand. And I told you once our economy starts getting more exposed, foreign investors are going to leave it. They're going to stop. And what does that mean for you? What that means, and what does that mean for the rest of the economy? This means they now need to raise rates on treasuries and bonds and T-bills and everything I told you. That means these are going to skyrocket. They're going to skyrocket. They got to get that 9% back. Otherwise, we need to buy it. Well, I just showed you guys. We're broke. We can't buy their fucking bonds. We can't buy their notes. They can't, they can't finance their debt through their people. We don't have enough money. You took it all. You stole it all. We cannot finance your fucking spending. So, what do you do? You're going to have to jump those rates massive. Okay. And you've seen them going up. You've seen the, t the tenure. You've been seeing the rates jump the last two days. They've skyrocketed. And they're going to keep skyrocketing. Well, what that means, tenure auction had a 24% dealer takedown. What that means is you're going to have to start spending less. Well, we know the government's not going to fucking do that. There's no way. They can't. They're going to keep adding to that. They took the debt ceiling off. They don't care. Look at this number right here. Insane. 42% of spending in March was financed by new debt. Can't figure out what's going on. You're literally taking old and refinancing with new massive interest rates. And now what are you going to do? You're going to, by the time this all... And this isn't even the worst part. See... You guys, I talk about the commercial real estate. That's not even the biggest bomb that's going to hit. Look at this. This came out last year. And I've been talking about this forever. You have $8.2 trillion due this year. You have $8.2 trillion in debt due in the next couple months. That needs to be rolled over 
at the new interest rates, at the new rates. Well, those rates are going to skyrocket. They're going to skyrocket before they renew these over. Now read this bottom. The average interest rate on the 30 trillion of on the federal debt sits at 2.4%. This came out 2 years ago. The numbers have drastically I should have got a new one. They've drastically increased from from this report, okay? In 3 years, over half of that total federal debt will be returned and be to need to be refinanced. And you're looking at about 4.4%, which actually will be higher. So it'll be higher. It'll be around 49 to 5%. Okay? <laughs> the amount that this debt is going to cost when you renew will put us to about $1.9 trillion on interest. $2 trillion. And we're not even going to... I mean, you're now going to be spending more on interest than on Social Security, the defense. You're going to be spending as much as you spend on interest as you do on defense and, and Social Security combined. On interest. Now your deficit's flying up. So what are people doing? They're looking over going, your economy is fucking garbage. We're not buying your notes. Because we don't know if you're going to be able to fucking afford to pay this back. We don't think you're going to pay it back, so we're leaving. You guys are garbage. You, you, you made a, Everybody's finally, like I said, it's like it's an open book now. Everybody's finally starting to realize what's going on in the economy. What, what have the feds been doing? They've been trying to sugarcoat it for the last couple months. They've been hoping people are betting on on all this shit. On, on oh man, rates will come down soon, soon. No, no, they're not. They're not coming down soon. They can't. The economy has not improved in any way, shape, or form. And as a matter of fact, it's gotten worse. So supplies, demand is still there. Your supply is getting worse. And that's the thing. That's what these guys don't get. Your supply every time. Look at this. Every time you have these companies defaulting, there's less supply out there. Demand's not going down because you raised the price. The price is going up because the fucking supply is going down. So at what point are you ever going to well, we'll just get it to so yeah, exactly. You're gonna have to get it to a point to where it's so ex expensive everywhere and every possible way. You can build your surplus back up. Well, if you do that again, you're the way. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, and I've been trying to get people prepared for this. In my lifetime, there will be, I feel like, a civil type war in the United States type thing. Too many people are waking up to this system. Too much corruption is going on. Too many people are seeing Jamie Diamond can go into a fucking presidential office, throw his weight around when he did five felony crimes and not go to prison. Eventually, this is going to get out to too many fucking eyes. People are starting to realize we're bailing these banks out by the trillions. You guys... How many hours of work for you is it to bail out a trillion dollars worth of these bankers? It's years and years and years. And eventually, you run out of fucking years to borrow. You run out of fucking years where people are going to say, okay, it is now more affordable to rent in all 50 metropolitan cities than it is to buy. They want you to rent and own nothing. They don't want you to buy. They're Like I said, they're crushing their middle class. Well, by doing that, once again, you're killing your entire economy. It's why gold will continue to rise. And it will rise faster and faster and faster. People are going to get away from these fiat currencies because they're just a fucking sham. And people are figuring out exactly what the forefathers said. When we figure this out... We'll get the fuck out of it. This is why the SEC is attacking every single crypto that they could possibly look at. Oh my God, we're going after every crypto. We're going after it because it's their way out. It's their way out of the system. It's the way that they can go ahead and take a commodity and set a value to it. It doesn't rely on the government. That is fucking a sham. Like I said, it, reality... 
They can tell you what they want. They sugarcoat everything. But when you look at facts, when you look at the charts across the board, when you look at them having no plan in place other than, well, we're just going to continuously print. We're going to make new debt to pay for old debt at a higher rate, and they can deal with it down the road. Murphy, please, baby, you're pushing my whole chair. I will I'll play you soon. I'm okay. He gets all crazy when I start yelling. He thinks I'm all upset. <laughs> it's okay, baby. But, but like I said, it, it's ripple effect, ripple effect, ripple effect. And people sitting there going, nothing's happening for three years. Yeah, something's happening. People are fucking waking up. People are pulling out. And guess what they're doing? Money market fund levels, they're going to an all new high. They're at $6.11 trillion. And I told you guys a long time ago, guys, money market funds, get the fuck out of a bank. Get the fuck out of a bank. Why are you in a bank at 0%? Oh, I'm at 0.02% when I could be making fucking six over here. There's no reason for banks. And, and as long as this debt keeps going up, as long as the deficit gets worse, banks can't afford. They can't afford, you guys. This is my point. They can't afford to get more, more interest. They can't. They've already said it. And guess what? There's more regulations coming in. They can't afford to put more capital away. The banking system is going to collapse on the system itself because the banking sector is becoming less and less a necessity. You went into a bank. Think about it. Why did you ever go into a bank? Well, I go into a bank to build a savings. I go into a bank to pay my bills. Well, you don't build a savings anymore. With inflation, the way everything is, you don't build a savings by, by earning 0.02% in a bank. You earn it everywhere else. You earn in other areas. So banks are going to have less and less. They're, they're there for lending. That's, that's what they're necessarily there for. Well, every bank says we don't make money. We're not in the lending business. Well, yeah, you're going to end up becoming in the lending business only. Like I said, banks... More and more pull out, more and more pull out. And this is what I told you guys. I even showed you. How do you kill a too big to fail bank? How do you kill one? It's very easy. You make sure everybody knows how corrupt that bank is. And you fucking make everyone pull out their deposits. You don't even need everybody. You need as many deposits pulled out as, 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 as they no longer have assets to back up their bad bets. It's that simple. And you keep pulling them out. And you keep pulling them out. Keep informing people. J.P. Morgan Chase is the biggest terrorist organization in the United States. It has done more harm to the United States than any terrorist organization financially. It has crumbled us within. And yes, it's caused deaths. There are people that have defaulted and, and, and fell victim to their fucking stuff. And they've committed suicide. There are people that have jumped off buildings that were executives of theirs. Other banks. I said this. People that want to sit there and like, man, I posted this today and people were like, that, 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 that's kind of a harsh punishment to push her to death. She stole, stole $44 billion from people. She destroyed $44 billion worth of people's lives. This shit's insane. Now, I'm not saying go. we need to go run and, and, and do vigilante things and, and, and violence. I'm not condoning that. Legally, these fuckers should be arrested, tried, and put to fucking the harshest punishment. Whether Obviously, we're not going to charge them to death. But life in prison, no parole. How about that? Life in prison, no parole, no chance, no nothing. And talking maximum securities. And you know where you put Jamie Diamond? You put Jamie Diamond where there's the most rapiest rapers Ever. And, and, and you don't even watch them. You just let them have them. Let them rape this guy daily. Because this guy didn't care that he was funding a sex, a sex island for children that were do getting that. He didn't give a fuck. Instead, he's over here throwing his weight around trying to stay out of prison. Because that's all this guy is. He's a fucking terrorist. He's a criminal. Jamie Dimon is the biggest piece of shit in the planet. Period. He's a bigger pile of shit than Ken Griffin. Ken Griffin's up there, but this fucking dude, Ken's not out there funding Petter Island. And, and, and this dude sleeps at night. This fucking piece of shit sleeps at night. Fucking hate Jamie Diamond. God, I hate that loser. Like, the, what a fucking, just a corrupt piece of shit. But like I said, 
All of this is going to come back and collapse on them. And this all comes back to, again, the Fed's lending. You have private lending drying up, bank lending drying up, federal lending drying up. You guys, all of their their tools, all of their, hey, I need to borrow, it's all drying up. It's all drying up. There's no rates coming, no rate cuts to save them. There's nothing. They will be fucked soon enough. AMC will be recovering soon enough. And again, even if you're not an AMC, GME, whatever you're in, I don't care. I, like I said, I don't care. I never, ever sit there. You don't see me ever make videos and talk shit about companies. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't care what stock you decided to. You're your own human. You're your own adult. You, you chose to pick a stock. And if you think that that stock's manipulated by the same people that I do, guess what? It probably is because they manipulate the whole fucking market. Why would I care? We don't need to have the same stock. You, we can both like football but not like the same football team. You, we have the same enemies. It's it's time the community stops with this little, oh, my God, you're a shill because you gave out this information. If they gave out information that you don't like, it's not hard to prove somebody wrong in a tweet. I do it all the time. You don't have to call him a shill and go cry baby around and then everyone block this guy. We're fucking 10 years old. No, you just say, actually, here's proof that shows that you're incorrect. It, that Wow. And then the person can, instead of you guys hating each other instantly into a block and can go, let's have a discussion and we can both learn something like adults. Now, I'm having a child here, another one here soon, so I need to... You know, again, get into my parental thing here, guys. It's okay to disagree. It is. It's okay if you don't like somebody's DD. It's very simple to take the time. They took the time to make the DD. If you don't agree with it or like it, you should be able to take as much, equally as much time, if not less, and say, here's how you're incorrect, right? So, guys, Ken Griffin's your fucking enemy. Yes, are there, I'm sure there's influencers out there. I'm sure there was people. You saw one with Matt Coors. Of course there's people out there that have interests against you. Of course there are. But it's not hard to fucking see those people. It's not hard to see when they're sitting there bashing the stock that I own AMC two days later. The fucking corporate, the company sucks. The CEO sucks and everyone stay away. Yeah, I'm sure you definitely fucking own AMC. Clearly. Well, I, I sold Adam Aaron fucked me over. But I sold on the run-up. I sold on the run-up when we hit... Okay. So if you sold on the run-up, that means you made money. What? When did Adam Aaron fuck you over? What What happened after you apparently sold on the run-up has nothing to do with you anymore, does it? Like I said, the shilling, the, it's like, guys, it, it's time to get past this shit. It's time to get past just watching guys, YouTubers, for entertainment. If they're not producing facts about what the fuck is happening, what are we doing? If you're not learning, if you want to go f follow some guys, learn TA, learn shit like that, do it. But it's like th this shit where it's like, God, we got to have fucking 10 videos because I don't like a guy's DD. Dude, fuck off. I mean, Jesus Christ, I've had 70,000 videos made upon me. And then and, and guess what? They say I'm wrong. And then six months later, it turns out I'm right. Literally, literally the only thing I've been wrong about because people go, you were wrong about the reverse split. Hey, moron, he said it himself. Without it, you, you could have had chapter 11 instead. So you can whine about what you're down right now, or you could have been down everything. You, you could have whined that we're down now, but still have a chance for recovery, still have 20% short interest, still in the play, still have everything turning around, or you could have had nothing. Period. You could have filed chapter fucking 11 because he had nothing else and no other way to raise capital. Or we could have sold two, three billion fucking ape shares and been stuck there and been right where we are now. Again, it was the only logical fucking play. Literally, it was the only logical play. And once again, we're back to 58 million short interest on AMC. And you still have 90 million shares on loan. So the numbers are all still there for the squeeze. And your company's still there, now ready to turn around. And fundamentally has improved every single way, shape, or form. Now, when you, you, invent, you guys all jumped into AMC, you jumped into a play that was shorted to fuck. Why? Because it was a dying business model at the time. 
content didn't come back, and AMC was burning cash. They started shorting AMC because the fundamentals didn't make sense. It was a logical short play. If apes didn't come in, it was going down. Fundamentals needed to be fixed for the short thesis to die. And that's what happened. It's now dead. The short thesis for AMC is dead. I don't care what any of these fucking clowns say. I don't care what any of these crybabies say. I don't care what any of these people that just want to bitch and blame every fucking thing on Adam Aaron. If you blame the stock price solely on Adam Aaron... You're uneducated. You're so fucking uneducated. It's unbelievable. Knowing what you know, looking at the people, looking at lawsuits right here that literally tell you word for word. And they got charged, you guys. They got charged for this. This wasn't like, oh, you're just bringing up a lawsuit and they said it. <gasps> nope. They lost. They got charged for doing this fucking crime right here, which is what market makers do daily. You look at, that's like blaming every single, and this is the thing. These guys that want to cry and just blame them on every single thing. Open your mind and expand what you're watching. Because all you do every day is only watch AMC. There are tons of companies, like, here's my point. Adam Aaron and, and the AMC board, like on the new proposals, which we'll go over here on my next video. Adam Aaron and the board are just trying to protect themselves because they're doing illegal crimes. No, um, actually, that proposed number, that proposal where it talks about them not being able to be sued and shit. That's that's basically saying, hey, we want to stop dumb fucking morons like Ethan, who's now in fucking prison because he's got mental issues. People that followed Ethan and, and Project Popcorn, you literally followed somebody who has mental is, is mentally challenged, dude. Literally has mental problems and needs to go to a psych ward and doesn't understand reality and how things work dude this guy is fucked up in the head and and you're following this dude into the ground well guess what he's in prison now for being a fucking clown which he's been for the last three years stop focusing on stupid shit guys focus on who is committing the crimes it's the fucking market makers it's the fucking banks that's what you need to focus on. We need to get back to focusing and educating the masses. Because when this crash happens, and it's going to fucking happen, everybody, you guys, here you go. For you people, you've been saying it for three years. I told you for three years, yes. I said the feds were bailing them out, okay? Guess what? The feds could no longer bail them out. They're dried up. So then I told you that the banks were bailing them out. Guess what? The banks are all dried up. They can't bail them out anymore. And then I told you they would run to shadow banking. Guess what? Shadow banking, it's drying up and it's about to trigger a fucking world crisis. So yes, I told you TikTok, and then I told you where they'd run next. I even showed you where they'd run next, and then they ran there next. And now I'm telling you, after shadow banking, after private lending, after federal lending, and after bank lending, there's no more lending to be had. There's no more lending to be had. There's no more places to go. Why? Like I said, these guys are fucked, dude. They're fucked. Let the crash happen. Let CR, let commercial real estate happen. Let, let this debt, let the national debt be renewed. Watch those fucking interest rates. You guys, you want to know when the crash is happening. I'm telling you right now. Here's your go. How do I know when to bet on shit? How do I know when to fucking... Well, how do I know when this crash is happening? What What is my number one sign? One, your treasuries are going to start to skyrocket. The second you see these treasury rates skyrocket, it's getting pretty fucking close because they're now renewing debt. And when it starts to skyrocket... Listen to me. When it skyrockets, and this is, I promise you, you are already seeing hundreds of billions leave the banks. I've shown you. I've literally shown you each month how much has left each bank. I've shown you. It will double. You will see hundreds of billions of dollars leaving the banking system. Hundreds of billions. 
And they cannot afford that. They can't. They've already said right now, we're, we can't afford anybody leaving. Omega, Jesus, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Baby Bigums, that's a lot of diapers, man. So I uh, truly, truly appreciate that, my friend. But like I said, when you have nowhere else to run, you have no more credit to give. You now need to start to sell assets. Yeah, everybody wants to say, yeah, the they shorted this, they, sh they they did this, the reverse split let them cover. No, actually, they just moved it all into more fucking derivatives contracts. That's what they did. And then they were able to push those fucking derivative contracts off on the old stuff. Like I said, it, it they didn't, there's still obligations out there. It, they didn't go away. Like everybody sits there and thinks they did this and covered this. If they did that and covered, when the fuck did, the, there was zero price movement at any point, ever. There was no, there were no covering. People want to sit there and say they covered this and no, they didn't cover shit. There was no buying pressure. It got to that 178 where we were buying it back up and kind of went down and nothing happened ever get, ever since. I said, dude, price, price, te price tells you the story. Your emotions tell you something else. Mr. Uh, 69 there. And, and speaking of Antera, who you said, oh my god, Antera, you mean this Antera who's fucking basically going broke and, and, and you mean this Antera? Antera did everything and then they covered. Actually, Antera's getting fucked up their ass and they're about to go bankrupt. But again, they have nowhere else to run. Commercial real estate's crashing. Gold will continue to go up, guys. And it will definitely hold because, again, fiat currency around the world is going nuts. Now, one of the things I really wanted to show you guys. Right here. Now, back, speaking of GameStop, speaking of, you know, GameStop, AMC, that report and all that. Credit Suisse. Again, you guys. They sealed Credit Suisse's records for 50 years. 50 years. Do you remember that? They, they, Credit Suisse, they had all the bags all set. They, they absorbed everyone's bags. A lot of the bags were put in, into swaps and given to Credit Suisse. Pushed, oh, what did I tell you? The number one thing they will do, the first thing they will do is push their fucking, they will package it all up and they will move it to another country where there's not regulation that has the same rules. And I've showed you many, 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 many files, reports, many documents, many court cases where this was the case. And they showed that they moved them over to other, other uh, uh, exchanges. Well, I want you guys to really listen to this. UBS on break of Switzerland's too big to fail reckoning. If you come down here and read this, this is insane. So all of those bags were so massive. They were so massive. If you come down here, they're talking about the entire country, the entire Swiss, everything. Their entire economy basically just, just going to nothing. Being destroyed in the blink of an eye because of these bags that we have been talking about forever. Well, if you come down and look, they have about a $1.7 trillion balance sheet which is double the size of the swiss economic output giving the bank obviously a massive 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 weight on the economy well it talks about if this thing goes down which it very very well could by just a little 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 bit any little small thing can set this off they're talking about how, how fragile ubs is they're talking about how they want them to get more you know more liquidity more this and they can't. And they're saying they can't do it. They can't raise what they need. They're talking about if this thing goes down, their entire economy will crash with it. Everybody wanted to sit there and talk about those bags and all this stuff. You guys, those bags are literally going to crash an entire fucking nation's economy. And they sealed them up because they can't let people know the truth on how big those are. This is insane. So I know you guys, I know it's been years. I know it's been years. I've fucking been in it with you. And I know you guys are, my AMC position's at a loss. 
But I've made what I've lost in AMC back by doing plays that I've told you guys and showed you guys. I made way more than in, in, in my, my Coinbase play alone. I don't... And I've told people this over and over. You don't have to just buy and fucking hold the whole time. Take your losses or else you're an ape. You can make money other ways to offset those those losses. And, and, and it's okay to make those plays. It, it's okay, you guys. You don't have to sit there. And, and if anyone ever says a play, you're a shill, you're a piece of shit, uh, you're a grifter, no. No, sometimes it's okay to do all these other things, and there are there are ways to make money. Like I said, do TA, learn it. I, I never liked that Lou guy. I never liked that Lou guy. And but one of the only things, because I know he was massive right away. So I mean, I did watch. I've watched like a couple of his videos, but I mean, not many. But I watched him. Where one thing he ever said that he you no, know, I ever agreed with the guy on was he was like, you know, you can't. He goes, you can trade. On event trading. In event trading, I make most of my money in event trading when it comes to the market. I look at what's going on and I make my trades off events that happened. It is a, to me, a very good way to make money because you know you should have a rough estimate on, on, on how much to gain. On a, It's not a guessing game as much. You know what, what should be affected. What you, you know, There's a lot more, all right, this, you know, knowledge behind it. Compared to, I want to do a squeeze play. You know, yeah, there is TA. Yeah, I do do TA plays, but I feel like I hit more on my event plays than I do on TA plays. To be honest, but like I said, guys, it, you don't have to just sit there and just keep taking a loss and keep taking a loss and keep taking a loss and keep taking a loss, and then that's the only way to play this. If you think the price. I don't want to get – see, that's the thing. I don't want to encourage options and things like that either because I know that that can get really tricky. But I guess what I'm getting at is there's tons and tons and tons of ways you know, to play this market. And you don't have to agree with every single person and how they play it. But in the end of the day, we all have the same fucking enemy. We're all being stolen from by the same fucking criminals. And these same criminals are destroying the country. Let's just start focusing on those people, focusing on good things with our company. You guys, if you're an AMC and you're listening, if you have a Twitter, I don't give a fuck how big your Twitter is. I don't care if you have two followers. AMC spent 40 fucking million dollars on those Nicola Kidman ads. Now, I don't even want to get into that because I I know they blew up. But to me... <laughs> That much? Come on. Like, you could have done someone else. Like, And it's not like Nicole Kidman's this, like, holy, it's Nicole Kidman. Who, who the hell, like, gets jacked up on her? The fact she cost it that much blows my mind. But my point is, advertisement, you spend that much money because advertisement makes that big of a difference. It does. Look at my Twitter. Look at my Twitter. What is my Twitter? My Twitter is 100% exposing crime every day it's 90 percent. hey they're stealing from you look at look at facts on what's really happening in the economy and what's the other other um here's a movie 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 um you know obviously i always like to i always love to show when buildings are getting crashed hey by, guys by the way another movie coming out do you see my point here here's all the up and coming movies if you're an amc Show all the fucking movies. It, it, don't like my... Don't just like it. Hit the fucking retweet tweet button. Repost. It, it's two inches to the right. Or to the left. Don't hit, this, don't hit the heart. Fucking repost it. It just takes one person... One person to see that... that uh, a trailer. And go, wow, that looks good. And then... I, there's been plenty of times I've come on Twitter and I was like, damn, that movie looks good. I never had an idea. Every time you do that, that's profit for AMC. How can you help your company out? Well, if you're not going to go and buy the stock and you're not going to do anything, see if there's some movies coming out and spread some word. I mean, you know what I mean? If you're in GameStop, talk about, you know, hey, look, there's new video games coming out, blah, blah, blah. Again, here's another thing. Another project coming out in Ryan Gosling. And, and I want you guys to listen to this if you're in AMC. I have zero concern about AMC. Zero. 
Not a single one. AMC should be just fine. Content in 2025 is incredible. Content coming in May alone and from beyond is incredible. 2026 is going to be ridiculous. 2026 is going to... I believe 2026 will hit pre-pandemic numbers. The, the fucking box office in 2026, the, the announcements coming left and right, the, the Star Wars movies and all those things coming... Dude, 2026 will be insane. The the new Toy Story movies coming out in 20... Like I said, AMC's future at this point, they just needed to get through this last little bit. That's why they wanted that last big raise. But like I said, guys, we have plenty of cash on hand. The stock price makes zero sense. Once we re restructure, and I, I'm literally thinking... I think what will happen is by the end of next week, we will finish up our, our raise. I think by the end of next week, our capital raise will be finished. I will give it about... Two weeks after that to three weeks. So maybe in about a month, three weeks to a month, I believe AMC will announce that they have restructured that 2026 debt. Then from that point, the box office will, like I said, the box office will be amazing in May. I already showed you the movies and AMC will recover. AMC's price will recover in May. Where is that tweet? I must have closed it. I closed it. Either way, there's like nine movies coming out in May that are all insanely good. Like I said, May, you could easily have a billion-dollar month at the box office. It could be an insane month at the box office. I don't see it right off the top. But that's my point, guys. We sit there and talk about how three million people are on, on Twitter, but yet I see maybe five people retweet a, retweet a movie. Go on AMC Theaters right now. The f it's obviously not AMC theaters. Like, what the fuck? I don't remember what this thing is. God damn it. <laughs> Why is it not just AMC theaters? What the hell? Okay, I'm apparently retarded here. Does anyone know what the fuck AMC... <laughs> what is going on, dude? There. Good grief. What the hell? It is AMC Theaters. Why is, was that not working? Um, <laughs> I need to go back to kindergarten and learn to spell there. And my E and R at the end there. <laughs> my bad. But yeah, I mean, look at this. 158 likes. 51 retweets. Retweet this shit, guys. 70. 60 or 88. Retweet the fuck out of these. These should be thousands. If we have millions of people, these should be thousands. Well, this is kind of, that's kind of cool. They got Shrek coming back. Shrek 2 coming back for one week in AMC. I didn't know that. Uh, if you like Shrek, damn, that's tomorrow, man. Tomorrow you can go see Shrek. But see what I mean? This is what I'm talking about, guys. Make sure we're showing this. Recover as in five or 50. I mean, once we start to recover, here's the thing. They're shorting now at this price. If AMC recovers to five, six, seven bucks, these guys were shorting at $3, 289, 297. They're pretty fucking red, aren't they? So if this recovers to six, seven bucks and they're shorting at 297, that could put quite a bit of pressure on these guys. So it could go from five. It could jump right away. That's the thing. With how fragile everything is, with how much, how little available lending that these guys have, it could take four, two, three, four dollars, two dollars in a price range to put enough pressure on these guys to where they're in the red that hard to where they need to make moves. Like I said, here's the thing about shorting. They're shorting at the bottom. Think about that, guys. They're now shorting right now at the bottom. They're shorting at the bottom. AMC's dilution will finish in the next week. CPI is now priced in. And they have shorted and shorted and shorted. Again, you went over 4.5% in the last two weeks. Short percentage will be right back to where it is. So, again, I... You'll probably end up at about 60 million shares short by the end of this week or by halfway through next week. You'll have 60 million shares short in an AMC again. 
Monkey Man, yeah, I heard Monkey Man's doing good. And that's the thing, too. Like, I, th to be honest, I mean, I told you guys I didn't think we'd even make 300. I, I was like, guys, I think, you know, Q1, we're going to make, like, you know, 200, 350, maybe 400 million if we're lucky. You know, I didn't, I didn't think we were going to do very well. Well, it's like, we actually are doing pretty good right now. Way better than, I'm not saying, like, it's insane, but we are doing better than I thought. We're already at 146 million. Well, after today, we'll be at 150 million. So, and then Civil War. So, I mean, you're going to hand up, you know, this could be over 300 million already by the end of this week. So, I mean, we could end up having, you know, a 450, 500 million box office. I, I, I mean, I, I thinking what we can end up having is about a 2.2 to 2.3 billion box office is where I'm at. I think that in Q2, we'll have about a 2.2 to 2.3 billion box office, to be honest with you. So back and then, and then at that point, AMC should be profitable. No, we went over Swiss. I think I've went over pretty much everything I wanted to go over. Credit drying up in the shadow banks. Um, we got treason going on with the super users getting insider information so they could bet against you. Oh, how'd I miss this one? This is my funny. This is this one here. How'd I miss this? Okay. FDIC chief says U.S. ready. We're ready. If big Wall Street Bank ever failed. First of all, the FDIC is broke and already asking for them to fucking put billions and billions more in because they're fucking broke. So how are you prepared if a giant Wall Street bank goes down? And why are you bringing this up now? And, and why does that come out of the blue? You just kind of come up out of nowhere and you're like, yeah, by the way, uh, we think if there's, a, if there's bank failures and stuff, uh, we actually laid out, we got new plans in case there's bank falters. Yeah. And they're not good enough. <laughs> like I said, they can't even afford, they're not even going to be able to cover the regional banks. How can they cover a freaking big large bank? They can't. So the fact this guy's even coming out talking about this and brings this up out of nowhere, that should sound alarms. Like, hey guys, uh, in case there's mass bank failures or, or a big bank failure, we, we're okay. No, you're not. No, you're fucking not. You're not even close. <laughs> Like I said, guys, companies defaulting, defaulting, credit cards defaulting. American, well, guess what? We're all subprime borrowers, so guess what? You're now going to have another sub. We're all fucking at subprime borrowing. So that means you guys are now going to have maybe subprime mortgages out there again because no one can afford them. And you're giving out mortgages to people that shouldn't be getting them. So, again, the economy is collapsing on itself. Oh, again, oh, also... U.S. 30 average year mortgages have now went up to 7% again. So we're back over 7% for mortgages. Here's the problem with that. Every, Like I said, everybody's working two jobs. The prices of houses are going down. The prices of houses have dropped. Supply has went up over the course of the last, what, four, four and a half months. We've been watching supply increase. So supply is increasing. Price is decreasing. But it's not decreasing fast enough. What you're also having is big companies, big firms come in and buy up all the single family units, which is holding this up as well. Well, now that we're back at 7%, you're going to, and rates aren't going anywhere. As a matter of fact, I believe you're going to see more rate hikes this year. Your housing market is completely dead. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. You're going to see prices drop a little bit more, but the problem is, is now everybody's subprime, so you're not going to be able to see anybody get these loans, which over the next course of, you know, five, six months, I'm going, I, I'm assuming you're going to see the price of these houses drop pretty drastically because you're going to have nobody that can afford it again. And, let, and if they pass this law here with these firms not being able to buy it, you're going to have no demand. So they're going to have no choice but to keep lowering these things. One of the things I said a long time ago, like three years ago, when I told people to get a house, you know, back then, you can get it now, you know, you could get it then because the price was down. And then a year later, the price skyrocketed. But I was like, you can get a price now, even though, the, you know, get it locked in now because you can still refinance. You can always lower your rate later. 
What you can't lower is that initial buying cost. So I don't know. I don't really see the housing market improving very much for anybody. I, I just We're in a stalemate right now. And that's the thing. The housing market's in a stalemate. You're in a mass deficit. You're having corporations close down. You're having people go broke. And now you're literally having everybody default on credit cards. And now they're defaulting on loans as well. Which means nobody's collecting taxes. How are you collecting taxes if nobody can pay their fucking mortgages alone? You're not. So, also, another thing when it comes to taxes I want to show you guys. No, I'm not. I'm not saying don't pay your property taxes. <laughs> <laughs> but a New York property taxes, like I said, you're getting less and less and less taxes. Even over here, unpaid property taxes are starting to rise. It went up to a record in $880 million this year. So again, people aren't able to pay taxes. You're getting less and less because people are getting less and less income. So you're making less and less revenue off that. Like I said, we're, we're in between a rock and a hard place right now, guys. So gold silver oh here we go this shit you guys gotta hear this if i haven't convinced you to leave banks now i now i will but bancasella and hype down have blocked their customers for three days this bank has shut down their ability to spend money they can't buy any purchases they can't do anything they have blocked their money for three Three days, four days now. It's been since April 7th. They've literally shut off people's ability to buy and spend their money. It's gone. Now, I've told you guys, this is what they'll do when they start to collapse and people can't start buying these, these picking up these bad banks, picking up these bad investments. So, what can they do now? They just shut their, they just literally shut off their accounts. That's a bit concerning. Now, what else is happening? Listen to this chick. TM, she realized she gotten her FPOS card when she asked the teller for the money instead. She was told the bank doesn't carry cash. And Taryn Compton's here to tell us all about her terrible banking experience. Taryn, <laughs> what did you think when you walked into a bank only to be told they don't have cash? <laughs> I thought it was absolutely crazy. I thought she must have misheard what I wanted, if I'm honest. How can you go to a bank and not be able to get your own money out? Taryn, that's what I'm confused about. So what's in the bank if there's no cash? Isn't there, a, like, in the, if you open up the safe, what's in there? What is, how did they explain it to you? They just said, I'm so sorry, we can't help you. There's nothing we can do. We don't have cash here. So did you think maybe that was a temporary situation? That maybe they were going to get some cash tomorrow? <laughs> No, she actually said we don't carry cash anymore. Well, outraging. So when 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 all else fails, when you when you're too screwed, what do you do? We'll we'll just go cashless. We don't carry cash here anymore. Well, again, you're making banks less and less. If I can't go to my bank and pull out cash, if I go to a bank and I learn less. 6%, 5% less fucking interest than I'm earning at a money market fund. Why would I be in a bank? What do I have to do with anything with the bank? I should have zero pennies in that bank. What is the purpose of a bank at that point for me and you? It's not to build wealth. It's not to be able to store our money because I just showed you, you, you don't have access to get that money. Banks will become more and more pointless you will have tons of banks collapse you will have regional banks collapse and and there's nothing they can do about it there's nothing they can do they will not make it through to 2020 2025 without a massive massive collapse or a crash of any kind in the banking sector there is zero percent chance the only way that they can is to get their cbdc's in they need their cbdc's alive to, that is their only fucking out. Towards the end of the session, can you please post the Patreon link again? Well, Patreon link? Which one was that one? Uh. And. 
don't didn't know I had a page. Tell me more, Ricardo. What was what else was on the Patreon link? Like what what or Patreon? What what uh what was it about? And I could pull it up. I don't know. Uh, I don't know exactly which one you're referring to. But yeah, I, I mean, after that, guys, I, I'm pretty much done. Does anyone have any questions? Um, we went over the the treason supercomputer list. We went over co companies collapsing, FDIC saying, talking about mega banks failing. You got. Credit cards defaulting, Jamie Dimon throwing his fucking weight around, more illegal shit by Jamie Dimon, of course. UBS is on the brink of, of literally destroying all of Switzerland. Switzerland's about to be, those bags that everybody dumped on Switzerland's about to collapse their entire fucking economy. So, again, they can't, they can't sweep it under forever. We, our last 42% of spending was financed from old debt. Again, I mean, new debt massive rates nobody's buying in the auctions anymore well when they can't nobody's buying in the auctions anymore you need to make them more attractive you need to raise rates which once again you're going to kill banks this also shows that foreign investors foreign bidders are no longer they're, they're not as interested in buying they dropped down from 71 percent of total buyers to 61 percent that's a or 62 percent that's a big drop nine percent is a massive drop and when it gets down to the point where it's 50-50 us and 50-50 other, other countries buying, they're in a lot of trouble because we can't afford to buy these. So again, America, <laughs> we're in a lot of trouble. And there's going to be 0% chance that there's a fucking rate cut this year. It's zero. And they know that. And that's why Jamie Dimon is talking about that. And that's why Jamie Dimon and this super group of super users gets all this secret fucking information. Oh, you want my Discord? Uh, hold on, let me pull it up. I'm not in Discord as much as I used to be. I do come in there. There's still a lot of people in there, tons of apes. If anyone's an idiot, they do get kicked out. So, I mean, don't just come in here and be a clown. Here you go. Anyone that wants to join my Discord, here you go. Stay up on all the corruption. Like I said, everyone in there is pretty cool. As you can see, they're showing a lot of the stuff I'm showing. So we go over a lot of, a lot of corruption in there. But again, guys, just give it a second here. I, I know everyone's down. Everyone's fucking down in the dumps. Price sucks ass. Everyone's, like I said, I'm in a fucking red with you. It fucking sucks. That position fucking sucks. But again, at this point, company-wise, fundamental-wise, when we first invested, it was as bad as it can get. And now you're back to positive. Content's coming, and it gets only better in 2025 to posit cash flow positive to me every quarter. And again, you're going to put Megaopolis in there, Friday Night at Freddy's, um, Sa. So there will be other content that will be announced. I didn't see today. I haven't been on Twitter much. But again, there was another announcement panel today for 2026, and that was for, hold on, let me pull this up. Lionsgate did it yesterday, so at CinemaCon, let's see, I know, who was it? A Transformer and G.I. Joe crossover movie event is happening. So they're talking about new, more stuff again here. There will be more more video or more movies that will be announced today that will be released in 2025 just like friday night at freddy's 2. so let's see here oh here you go here you go paramount's panel announcements for 2024 through 2026 uh they got a star trek movie coming in 2025 a new scary movie a new scary movie will be coming in 2025 as well so again they already thought 2025 was going to be profitable for AMC. Now you add Megaopolis, you add Saw, you add Friday Night at Freddy's, you add a new scary movie to that. Um, Matt Stone and Trey Parker making a new movie coming out July 4th. 
So again, another movie, more content that is coming out in 2025 when we were already set to be profitable. A huge cast is announced in a new animated Smurfs movie that will be coming out Valentine's Day 2025. So again, more and more content in an already profitable year. An original musical with South Park, Trey Parker and Matt Stone and Kendrick Lamar is coming to theaters as well, July 4th, 2025. So again, more and more and more content. Um, Let's see here. That was, there was another, there's another panel that's being announced, another production studio. Let me see if they, oh, I think it was Disney today as well. Up for the next panel, we have Disney. Okay, so Disney will come out next. So there's going to be, so again, after all, so think of the 50 movies I already said at the start of the stream. Think of the 50 movies I already said. There's already amazing movies coming out. And then I think of the four more I added, and now you have three more here. So again, We'll see what Disney comes out with, but 2025 will definitely be a great year. Great year for AMC and a great year for the apes. But yeah, like I said, guys, if you want any information on movies, oh, here you go right here. A new scary movie reboot is in the works. Let's go. Civil War reviews. I definitely want to see this movie. If you haven't seen Civil War, definitely go, go see this when this pops out. I know a couple people saw uh, early screening. They said nothing but good things about it, so I'm excited to see that. I think it's going to be a very, very good movie here. Um, let's see what else we got announcements here. Any other announcements today on movies? Um, Smile 2 coming out. Let's see here. Uh, there's a Sonic 3. Wait, is, has there already been a Sonic 3? I thought it was Sonic. Yeah, Sonic 3 already came out. I apologize. <laughs> Oh, it's coming out. I'm sorry, it comes out this year. Sorry, I apologize. Um, I don't watch Sonic, if you can't tell. And let's see what else we got rocking. Yeah, that SpongeBob movie is going to kill it, you guys. This SpongeBob movie is going to des destroy it. I think this will be a $300, $400 million movie to, in domestic. Seriously. Children go nuts for this guy. They go nuts for this SpongeBob. They, I think like... When it comes to a cartoon, SpongeBob might be number one. This could be a huge movie, and if and with merchandise sales like that, like I said twenty twenty five, we should kill. What else we got going on here? Looks like that's all that's been announced so far. But still, I mean, like I said, nothing but great news. Great news. Um, let me. Get, I'm looking at the chat only now for the next two minutes. If, if anyone has any questions, go ahead and ask questions. I'll go ahead and answer the best I can. Constantine 2 coming out this year. Is it? Uh, let's check. Google that shit. Um, Constantine 2, it says, is speculative to be released in 2025 or 2026. So if they release Constantine 2, that, that should be another big movie. Keanu Reeves kills it, man. Keanu Reeves kills it. He's I love Keanu Reeves. He's a badass, dude. Yeah, Joker 2 is coming out. Like I said, the rest of this year, nothing but great stuff. But if you guys definitely check out this deep, I don't ever give out freaking Twitters to follow unless, you know, they give out information. But if, if you are in AMC and you do want movie updates, this Geek Vibe Nation, they do an amazing, amazing job uh, of being up to date. Because like I said, he, they're at the panel. They're always there. I have no affiliation, so now people, oh my god, he's, he's sh I don't even know anything about these guys. I just know they have a good Twitter, sorry. <laughs> but, oh, here we go. Oh, no, I already went over that. Wales, you're behind us, buddy. He needs to start watching the stream. Actually, about two hours ago is when I said it. Maybe he is watching the stream. Maybe he is watching the stream. Check out real quick on what we got going on here. Another order imbalance. We have a daily order imbalance on AMC. Apparently, it's too hard to fucking get all the orders. You know, order imbalances should never happen. It's just stupid. How long do you see this recovery for AMC taking? I think AMC will start being, I think, come Mar uh, May, AMC will start, like I said, generating. I think the recovery will start in May, to be honest with you. I don't see another re need for, we have more than enough cash. On hand again, I think he's gonna refinance this debt here. 
And once you refinance debt, has that much cash on hand, there's no reason for another capital raise right now. We're not going to generate, and we're not going to have another quarter where we're operating at these $180 million losses. Those aren't those aren't coming anymore. Um, and again, in 2025, 2026, I see profitability every single quarter, especially with more and more and more and more content coming out. That is literally all AMC is missing. That is exactly what Adam Aaron has said. 2025, 2026, we should be killing it. On top of that, in 2025, guys, you have to remember, we're not paying deferred rent and we're no longer paying off the credit facility. That is 40 to 45 million a quarter. That's a lot of money that you're no longer burning on, on, on paying off old credit, old, you know, that, that's a big deal. Can I talk about CBDCs? Uh, CBDCs are, I told you about a year ago, eventually they're just going to try and crash everything because they have no way out. And that's exactly what it looks like they're doing. They're trying to crash everything, give everybody no hope, crash the economy and say we need to create this new currency to, to have a recovery for the United States. Um, what they're going to do is they're going to have what is called a wholesale CBDC and retail CBDC. Retail CBDCs will be things that we can spend money on, but they will have power and they will be able to limit what you can and what you can and cannot spend your money on. They'll also have wholesale CBDCs. Wholesale CBDCs will act different than retail CBDCs. Wholesale CBDCs will, uh, CBDCs will be just between firms. So what that will do is now instead of firms having to put up leverage, they will buy the CBDCs and use that CBDC as a form of leverage for their trading. In other words, it will be a contract, more contract-wise, between that that bank and that borrower, which means a lot more corruption, a lot more this, a lot more cover-ups, a lot more hiding things. With CBDCs, you're, you're basically giving complete control to the central banks who are issuing that exact CBDC and you're allowing them to control what is a, you know the leverage in that situation because they basically are going to issue that leverage. It, it's just a joke. CBDCs are just more ways to crime hide crime. Since in my eyes, the derivatives contracts, the derivatives market is becoming more exposed because the shadow banking market, they want more exposure. They want to bring more rules, more regulation, more oversight in the shadow banking you need a new place to go. So what they'll do is make CBDCs where they control the data. Because if I have my CBDC and I don't have a regulator, I can control the numbers and I can make it say whatever I want to say. As I've already shown you guys before, they have no problem cooking the book. So with CBDCs, I can have complete control over everything. So CBDCs are literally, to me, the biggest nightmare that could happen to us. CBDCs are a way for me, for firms, when it comes to wholesales, that's their way to get out of this because they can go ahead and they'll they'll put the CBDCs, you know, they'll buy it. Well, the CBDC is going to have a value back by it. So I can see the value of the CBDC. Something's got to set that value. You know what I mean? Something's got to determine the value of the CBDC. So I can see the price going up and down through the CBDC. So what they'll do is they'll manipulate the price of their CBC, CBDC that they issued to help people reach certain, you know, all right, well, you need to reach this or you need to reach that. All right, that's, you see what I mean? It, it's just a gong show. Or you'll be able to use CBDCs, you know, jump the price and pay off other things. And then the price will just go back down. I guess it, it's a complete joke. Love your content victims, but you say everyone is broke, then you say we're going to be be big at the movies. I have a job in building and doing... I have a job in building and doing well, but you say housing is doomed. So which one is it? Well, if you look at new housing, new housing is completely stopped building. So you obviously don't have a construction job. What what do you have one in realtor? Realtor? Are you a realtor? Well, I can show you plenty of realtors that are drowning and have fucking. They're working at Menards and four other jobs because they make nothing doing their realtor jobs. So what do you do in housing? I'm in general contracting work, and I can tell you right now, there's not many people even going around fixing, doing anything. So I don't know what you're doing in housing. Love your content. You say everyone is broke. Okay, and here's my point. If you look at the Great Depression, 
If you look at in, in the entire history of the United States, what do people do when they're broke? They buy popcorn and they go to the movies. Movies and popcorn throughout the history of the entire United States has shown to be the one thing that is resilient through all great depressions. It's movies. You need an escape from shitty reality. When reality's shitty, the shittier reality gets, the more you want to escape it, the more you need something to distract yourself. That's why movies do great. Popcorn is cheap as shit and it's cheap to make. So when I go to movies, I can get a massive thing of popcorn and keep coming back, keep coming back. Popcorn always sells. So everyone can be broke and the movies can still do amazing, just like they've always done in the past when people were broke. Housing market, again, what what do you work in? I work in general contracting. I mean, I see all this stuff going on. I don't see much building going on around my area anymore either. You now need to, one thing that I'm also seeing when it comes to construction and building is they don't build at all on plots of land until you basically got your funding payment, everything going right away. You can't just buy it and do all this stuff. Like you need your cash and everything funded right up front before they even start building. Like back in the day, they didn't give a shit. They would start building. If your shit would fall through, they'd still have the house and they'd just sell the house that you know, they would just sell the house and still make the profit. Now they don't do that because there's a chance they don't sell the house after and they need to. And that's the thing with construction. As you know, if I'm, if I'm a, uh, if I'm a guy in construction and I have 10 houses lined up and I build this and I I don't get paid from any of those things, I still need to pay my employees and I haven't received any of that capital from those old houses until they're finished. So, Again, it's a big deal. So you're not going to you're only going to build one house at a time compared to building two or three at a time because you know you'll sell those eventually. So again, it's I don't know what you work in in housing, my friend. I'm in demolition for new housing. I mean, how how many jobs do you got? I mean, demoing? You you do you do demoing? I guess I don't, I mean, I guess demoing is probably massive and stuff. I mean, look at this, look at all these buildings that are losing, everybody's losing, all these companies are going down. So I'm sure you do have a lot of work. There's probably a lot of remodeling to work to do, of course. There's lots of areas in housing, but the main housing, like realtors, like I said, realtors, they're getting slammed. They have two jobs now. Realtors, not they're no longer their main source of income. My realtor who sold me this house actually worked at Menards while she sold me this house. And there's plenty of times I had to wait for her to get off to come meet me over here. Building new houses, like I said, I haven't. you can come around my area, go on, on all four cities that I mainly work in. I'm not seeing much construction going on anymore. I've seen a lot of, like you said, deconstruction. <laughs> I'm a framer there is. Well, again, in what areas? Where do you live? Just because you got some framework over here doesn't mean the guy in the next state does. Any more questions at all? <laughs> I don't see any more questions at all. Chat slowing down. <coughs> Zootopia too. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. But those those kids movies, man, those kids movies, those are the ones that do do the billions. And a lot of people they look down on those those kids movies, and it's like, man, children, kids movies are the best because not only does the kid want to go to the movie. The kid's going to be the one that's going to want to buy the merchandise. So if there's merchandise at the movie, he's going to want to buy that. Then he's going to want to get candy. He's going to want to get, you know, food, beverage. Those children's movies are the biggest revenue generators because they're the people that, like I said, the parents are good. We go to movies and stuff. We don't really care as much to spend compared to a child. They don't give a fuck about the thing. They just want all the candy. They want everything in front of them. So the parent's just going to buy it for them. So children's movies... Zootopia, that, that's going to be a huge generator for us. Massachusetts, well, I don't live there, man, so I can't 
comment on that while your average national real estate is struggling. And now that rates are going back up, you got to think, if I live in a house and I'm at 2 3%, why the hell would I ever sell to go to back to 7? You're never going to. You would have to sell your house for so much more than it's worth just to make up what you're going to have to pay for on the new loan. You're not going to be able to afford a brand new house. Oh, Who's calling me? Hold on one second, one second, one second. It was the wifey, the baby's kicking. Let's go. <laughs> I always love those updates. Ah, I can't wait. Three more months. Three more months and little Biggums will be here. Dallas is cooking because fucking you got all those people crossing, man. They got to put them somewhere. <laughs> we need to close those borders up a little bit there. Baby mama's doing good. Went to the doctors yesterday. She didn't tell me she had an appointment. She wanted me to go. She had to like see if she had diabetes or something. I had to like drink something and made me come. Otherwise, I was gonna go live yesterday. But she's doing good. Baby's doing good. Strong health. Heart, uh, heartbeat. <laughs> Little things would be Lou. Hopefully, he's not Lou reincarnated. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you, Cody. I'm so excited, man. I'm so excited. Yeah, Murphy can't wait either. Can you, buddy? You just can't run over the corner. Can ya? I'm excited too, huh? You'll be a big papa. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, solitude. That one wasn't too hard. Hard to figure out. <laughs> you know, they got to put those guys somewhere. And when they're crossing free willy at this point here, good grief. But luckily, you know, all these government, instead of doing anything about it, they're making programs to start funding them and giving them credit cards and housing. And So as soon as that stops, you know, construction will stop down there. <laughs> yeah, I know, man, it goes quick. They grow fast. My little nephew, I, it's funny, like, I haven't seen my nephew, it was like, he doesn't live in the state, so when they came back up, it was like a year and a year and a half, and my goodness, he was huge now, walking around, running, it's like, oh man, <laughs> whole new person. But I appreciate everybody coming in here, I just, I want to make sure, you know, everybody in AMC, you guys recovery's coming it is i know it seems like it's not i know it seems like everything sucks right now. it does it sucks ass right now but our other option again no on the reverse split you could have had chapter 11 and in and, and chapter 11 we just get fucked amc still would have been around you would have the company would have been saved or whatever this company still would have been around the only difference is, is we would have been lost everything so again i know it sucked this way Obviously, when we did the reverse split, I wanted us to raise capital when we were at really high levels. We, sh But it is what it is. We are where we are now. So I can sit there and whine and complain and bitch about the past and every single thing. But Or I can sit there and go, all right, moving forward, we're at this position now. And, you know, support this company and realize fundamentals are changing. Content's coming out. And content was the only thing that this company's lacking. And on top of that, you're talking about the number one theater chain, you guys. If Regal and uh, Cinemark and all these other, yeah, their debt's better. And yeah, they're, they're a little prof they got profitable because they're not as massive of a company. But again, we'll, we'll get that cash burn down. We'll get rid of these unprofitable theaters. We'll renegotiate contracts. We'll renegotiate uh, renewed uh, leases. I mean, we'll, we'll get that cash burn down even more and more and more. We'll close down unprofitable theaters. We've already closed down 100 theaters over the last three years. Again, I expect him to close down more. I really, really hope he starts to do more with this distribution. I am that is the one thing I've been insanely pissed off at Adam Aaron about, to be honest with you. Like, don't hype me up, don't fucking hype me up with like, oh, we got seven things coming out and all these concert films. Man, I haven't heard nothing yet. You know, don't pee on me and tell me it's raining. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if this phone's been ringing off the hook, let's get going. You know what I mean? <laughs> but other than that, you know, all I need him to do is just keep, you know, get get 
popcorn out in every grocery store. I go to Cub Foods, I don't see AMC popcorn. I go to Hy-Vee, I don't see AMC popcorn. Let's get this going. Get this out. Get that chocolate out in stores. Let's go. But all right, guys, I'm going to get going here. Got some stuff to do. I don't see many questions left. So like I said, guys, give it some time here. It'll recover. And by the time we start to do our recovery mode, their bombs should be going off. CRE, restructuring on the new debt. Uh, the treasury rates should be skyrocketing in a month or two. Banks will have money being pulled out of them. Look at the look at right now. If you're listening, pull up right now. Here's another play. Look at the regional bank ETF over the last month. No helps coming, guys. Look at the regional bank ETFs. Thank you for listening. I will be live. I'm I'm probably gonna go live what day is it? I don't know day anymore. I my day Thursday. I'll probably be be live next. Friday or Saturday. I do want to go over those proposals for AMC. We got to do them right this time. We have got to do them right this time. And I know these people don't listen to these people that are stupid as fucking uneducated. People want to sit there and act like you guys. Do you understand how many millions of dollars Ethan and those pieces of shit cost at AMC with that lawsuit? We need to not let that shit happen again. It doesn't let them off the hook for misdeeds, misconducts, and any any of the shit they want to pretend it does. They can still get in trouble for it. But we don't need to be having these fucking stupid-ass lawsuits by fucking people that should be literally diagnosed and put in a straight fucking jacket and then are now in prison because they're fucking literally... Something's wrong with your fucking mind, bro. <laughs> Who, who in their right mind threatens a district attorney? This guy's threatening district attorneys and shit. Like, this this guy's threatening Adam Aaron. This guy's going to come after every single one of us. This guy tells me he has lawsuits ready on 82 people. Fucker, bring it. Here's the fucking thing that's going to be funny if anyone ever sues me. One, I'm going to I'm gonna counter sue you because I guarantee you had defamation, defamation all over my fucking name. I guarantee it. So, not only will I counter sue you for defamation, you're going to notice and see that, one, I've never been paid by anyone. Ever. Ever. You notice? Here, since you're too uneducated to, to figure this out, if you want to know if somebody's paid off, there's a link on the bottom of their fucking info that tells you to join some fucking company. Because the second they join a company, they're censored on what they can say. Wow, there you go. I just solved the mystery. You notice how in three years I've never been sponsored by anyone? Do you notice how the 13, 14 times somebody asked me to sponsor them or or push their fucking exchange? I posted it on Twitter and told them to fuck themselves. I'm never going to get bought off. I'm going to go with you or with it. I'm going to stay in this play until I can't afford it. My position at this point is where it is. It, it, it is so fucking done. I'm just in that position. Like I said, I made that money back up other, everywhere else. And that's why I told people to get educated. Again, the Coinbase trade, the spy trades, all there was plenty of other trades that I've shown you where you guys could have made a lot up too. But that's where we need to be. Stop, baby, please. But at this point, guys, like, like I said, I, I have the same loss every fucking one of you guys. Everything I've preached, that's what it was. When I went and told you guys to buy Ape at seven, 77 cents and I made that profit back, that, that was what I cut back off on my losses, on my AMC position. I made I made money on the first run-up and then I bought back in and the shit I bought back in off, that's down. I'm right there with you. And guess what? I have still bought to this day, I'm still fucking buying, and I'm still going to keep buying, and I'm going to buy it until that fucking thing goes to zero, or or it does what I know should happen, period, that's it, that's me, that's where I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing this for fucking until it happens, or in three, four years down the road, I don't care, I'm not going anywhere, because I know what the fuck I know, I know my DD, I know what the fuck I've seen, I know what lawsuits have told me, I know what the fuck's going on, you see it. It, it, is something done about it, right? That I need to be done about it? No. But I know what's happening. Why the fuck would I ever give up on something that I know I'm right on? Why would I ever sell? I, I'm holding diamonds. I'm holding gold. I'm not going to sell you it for the price of a nickel, no matter how fucking long I'm holding on for. I'll give it to my fucking kids. I don't give a shit. AMC's not going anywhere. 
But your, and neither are your swaps, and neither are your obligations that you moved in swaps. And one day they're coming due. And guess what? There's 90 million shares on loan. What happens when those get recalled? Oh, those fucking pieces of shit could have recalled it and set it up. There's plenty of things that can make it go off. But as long as they're committing crimes, I will be here telling you exactly what they're doing. Until AMC squeezes or until AMC, I, they shut the buy. Listen to me. The GameStop report came out and they shut the fucking buy button off because AMC would have went higher. GameStop would have went higher. So I know it, that's not the top. I know it's not the top. It showed me before it wasn't the top. They shut it off before it could even reach the fucking top. So until they let it reach the top, they can fucking blow me. I'll be here all day long exposing them. AMC's dilution period, it's its coming to an end. There's only so many shares to go around, and there's only going to continue to be, be so many shares to go around. When we're profitable, fuck off. Their play's dead. I don't give a fuck. I ain't going anywhere. Love y'all. Have a good day. <laughs>